What's poppin' YouTube and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by that title and that thumbnail, I'm back with another great video. We're gonna be transforming Mr. Piccolo into a cute little toy poodle. I mean, he's already a toy poodle, but we're gonna be giving him a cute haircut. I can't wait for y'all to see this transformation. It's gonna be so awesome. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Drop something in the comments to let me know what type of videos you would like to see. And let's get straight into this video. First, we're gonna start off this video by shaving down his face so he can get that acquired poodle look. We're gonna be doing a tint on his face and a tint reverse in some areas. When shaving down a poodle face, you wanna start from the corner of the eye all the way to the ear and you wanna get all of that in a tint. It comes out the most cleanest when you do a reverse tint, so I am doing a reverse tint in that area. And then you also wanna get around his eye as clean as possible. As well as around his mouth and his nose because no pet parent really likes to have extra long hairs when the face is supposed to be cleanly shaved. Now, the reason that I'm doing this as prep work is because most dogs do not like to have their face washed, nor do they like it to be dried. So shaving it before the bath will actually allow their face to dry a lot quicker and make this an easier process for the dog and the groomer. And because I was moving too quickly, where I'm kind of rubbing my finger is where I messed up. I took the line for the top not just a little bit too high, but I was able to blend it and kind of make it disappear during the process of him being groomed. Piccolo was such an awesome little guy. He let me do literally everything. He cooperated with no struggles whatsoever during his grooming, his bath, the drying process. He was just all around an awesome little guy. And here I'm gonna be going in and doing his paw pads. What I'll generally do is I'll do the paw pads first because when I'm doing the paw pads, I clean in between the toes. And I do the paw pads with a 30 blade because that'll neaten up around the webbing of his feet and that'll give a much cleaner, sleeker look so you don't have those long hairs around his paw pads, his feet, as well as his nails. When I'm doing paw pads, I'm very precise because I don't like extra long hairs to stick out because the paw pads grow the absolute fastest. So I like to get them as short as I can and make them look as smooth as I can so it pushes out the time it'll take for him to come back and get groomed again. Because when dogs have long hair in their paw pads and it's overgrown over their feet, they actually lose traction and that's what causes them to slip and slide all over the floor. So me personally, I like to get them as short as they can. I actually had a customer stop me in the store and compliment me on how clean my dog's feet were because she said she takes her dog to a private groomer and the private groomer always leaves long hairs on her dog's feet and she doesn't like that. So she is actually going to be coming to my salon from now on. To clean out a paw pad properly, you wanna start from the nail at the base of the paw pad and you want to just lightly glide over the paw pad. You don't want to apply any pressure to the paw pad because you can actually cut the paw pad. And to get in between the paw pads, you lightly scoop out. You never wanna dig at the paw pads because you can cut the paw pad that way because the paw pads and the skin in between the paw pads so the webbing is very, very thin. Now I'm starting the clean feet process and I'm back with my tin blade and I'm just lightly going over the nail to catch any long hairs that are on the top as well as going over the paw with a tin blade in reverse. It makes the clean feet look a lot cleaner as well as more sleek and it helps aid to the look of that professional poodle cut that the owners are looking for when they drop off their pet. If you notice in this clip, Piccolo has some pretty bad tear stains. So in order to get rid of those tear stains, there's a couple things that you have to do. One, you need to give them filtered water. Filtered water is going to cut out all the bacteria and some of the byproducts that's in tap water, as well as the freshness of filtered water. The second thing that you wanna incorporate in their diet is blueberries. Blueberries is really good for tear stains. I give it to my dogs and her tear stains have gotten significantly better over the years. Another thing you wanna do is invest 
test and a really good face wash for them that has blueberries actually built into it that would give them a nice good scrub and then help tear stain build up a lot of the times tear stains are built up from allergies as well as particles and debris so if you're keeping a hold of how clean around their eyes are and just their face in general as well as finding out what they're allergic to you can tackle those tear stains and get rid of them If you've noticed, I left a little bit of a goatee on Piccolo. That is just so that I can have a better hold of his face until his completed groom. I don't know if y'all were able to catch that, but I did show just how long his nails actually were. I think I'm going to show them on his other paw as well when I'm done that paw. But his nails were so extremely long. And I just wanted to show the benefit of getting nail grinding so you can see how short the nails actually get. Look at how long his nails are compared to how short I got them with the nail file. So when you go to check your dog in for grooming, and they ask you if you want nail filing or nail grinding or they recommend it i would definitely get it because it makes a big difference and can prolong how much longer it'll take for him to come back in for his nails to be done So the next clip of him is me bathing him and I do feel like I talk about that enough about the importance of a proper shampoo and conditioner and how it'll really enhance the coat as well as the haircut if it's done properly and if you get the right products. So I don't think I'm going to talk about that today. What I do want to talk about is the importance of knowing what to do for your puppy when you first get him or her because a lot of people get puppies and they don't know what to do they don't know how to train them they don't know how to work with them so i kind of want to talk about that a little bit for today as opposed to talking about the bath process because again as i stated earlier piccolo was very well behaved for this grooming process so there was nothing here that i needed to teach or explain so when you're shopping around for a puppy, please be mindful of the type of dog that you get. If you're looking to get a long haired dog, do your research on one, how much the dog is going to cost to be groomed, not as a puppy, but as an adult dog. Two, research how much maintenance the dog will take, whether you can skimp out on getting him or her groomed that often or you need to get it frequently and then also keep in mind how long you want the dog's hair to be and what you're expecting of that puppy when you first get it a lot of people get dogs and they don't think to bring the dog to grooming right around the time that they get the dog they like to wait until the puppy is about five or six months old bring them in and say I want a full body haircut. Coming from a groomer, that is not okay. Cause when you get a puppy, they have to adjust to someone new, touching them, using clippers on them, scissors around their face and so on and so forth. Just like you would have to get adjusted to a new person that's doing your hair. So it's important for your puppy to come in for bath and trims just to kind of get used to it. So essentially what a bath and trim is, is just the face, feet, and the sanitary to get the dog used to the grooming process. So when they become about six or seven months, they can get a full body haircut. It is also very important to respect and understand what the groomer is telling you about your dog. So if you're bringing your dog in late and starting them off late when it's already almost an adult and you're asking for a full body haircut or demanding, which most people do for a full body haircut, and the groomer is telling you that your puppy is not ready, listen to your groomer. They are the professionals. They know what they're talking about. So if they're telling you, listen, if we force your dog through a full body haircut today and your dog does not do okay with it, your dog can get cut most people you'd be very surprised don't care about that because if the dog gets cut then it's on us so they don't care because it's not on them but it's not about that it's more so about the safety of the pet and getting the pet adjusted to all of the grooming practices because you don't want your puppy to struggle every single time it gets groomed because that makes for an unhappy process for the dog itself so essentially you want to take your time and smoothly transition your puppy into puppy trims and then into full body haircuts so the dog can be well behaved one because if the dog acts up there's special fees that we have to add on for certain things so if we require another person that's a special handling fee if the dog is mad that's a demanding fee there's a lot that goes into a dog which is why i heavily explain that 
researching the type of dog that you're going to get and everything that goes along with it is very important than just buying a dog on a whim because your child wants a dog. Also, when your groomer is explaining the haircut process and different lengths and things like that, for the people who have dogs that are hairdressers, please stop saying, I'm a hairdresser, I already know. There's a reason that groomers don't go into the hair salon and say, I'm a dog groomer, I already know. Because it sounds crazy. Because dealing with a person and dealing with a dog are two different things. You don't kick your manicurist or the person that's doing your pedicure for clipping your nails. You don't try and bite them for brushing out some tangles in your hair. You're also not dancing around in your seat when they're trying to groom you. And also, not to mention, human blades and dog blades are completely different. So a zero in human blades is almost bald. A zero in dog blades is a longer cut. So when you come in and you say, I'm a, I'm a hair stylist, so I already know the blades. Can you do a zero on them? That's nice and short. And then we look at you just a little sideways and we say, no, a zero is a bit of a longer blade and you're like no no, no I'm, I'm a hairstylist so i know the blades please stop saying that because we all at that moment think y'all crazy that's beautiful that y'all do people's hair but doing a person's hair and doing a dog's hair is so different so moral of the story is stop saying it it gets old and we don't care but moving back to the important part of this is bring your puppies in early. So by the time they are five and six months and you want to get a haircut, they are able to get one. I do want to pop in and say just real quick about his bath. I'm using our Hemp's shampoo and conditioner. And when I say that is my favorite shampoo and conditioner in there, especially for curly, fluffy dogs, it makes their coat so soft. It makes it feel like a nice pillow and it conditions it very well. And it makes the haircut come out phenomenal. Also, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but Piccolo literally did not move this whole bath. And if you talk to any groomer, that is all we ask of dogs to just relax, stay still, get the bath process over with because the better behaved you are, the faster your grooming process is. And I know dogs don't understand us, but we try and explain that to them all the time. But even for his drying, like he was just perfect. He just stood there. He let me do it because he understood, okay, if I just let her do it, I get to go home. And that's exactly what happened. He got to go home when he was done like every dog. <laughs> and I'm gonna say this in representation of all the groomers out there and they can 100% vouch for me. For a toy poodle, he was perfect because if anybody knows poodles, they know the toy poodles are the worst ones. They are the most hardest to groom because they are so difficult, but he, he was perfect. What I want to say about the drying process is when we are drying a dog, our essential goal is to get them as straight as possible because haircuts do not look cute when the dogs are still curly. So when we're drying them and you see us get a little bit closer or we focus on one area or we're taking it a little bit slower, it's because we're trying to get the hair as straight as possible to give the best haircut quality. Also, when you're blowing the hair out as straight as you can, it makes it a little bit more easier to brush them out when you get them on the table and it's time to start their haircut. This right here is why I save the goatee, so you can have better control over the head so he's not thrashing around. I mean, he was a fantastic dog, but just to make sure he doesn't thrash around or fall off the table and hurt himself. But that's why most groomers save the goatee. One, you can move the face out of the way while you are blow drying, just like I moved it up so I can blow dry his neck, but also to move it to the side so I can get behind his ears or even behind his head, his top knot, as well as when I'm doing scissor work, it helps me control his head while I'm scissoring his top knot.
Now we're moving on to grooming him and I'm going to be doing three fourths of an inch on his body because his mom said that she wanted a good bit taken off but she didn't want him shaved down to the skin. So I thought three fourths of an inch would look nice and cute and clean on him as opposed to probably the three inches, four inches of fur that he had on him. Right now I'm doing the first set of clipping. Whenever you're doing a dog, there's always a first set of clipping and the second set of clipping. The first set of clipping is just to take that length off. The second set after you back brush is to go through and neaten it up and you'll see me do that as well. When I'm switching back and forth with the legs, I'm trying to figure out the best way and the most comfortable way for the dog to get the inside of the leg. Because he's so small and so short, it's a little bit harder because my clippers by itself stood up is taller than him. When I'm running the clippers under his belly, I tend to go in reverse. And this is for every dog, but I go in reverse because it cuts a lot cleaner and looks neater when the actual body is done. I could not believe that I cut so high up on his head. I was so disappointed in myself. I mean, I was able to blend it in enough, but I was so disappointed in myself for doing that. This is the second cut that I was talking about. Right now I'm doing the back brushing and then I'm gonna to take the clippers and do the second cut. And that's gonna be the final cut before the scissor work. For people that are trying to learn how to groom at home and groom their poodles at home and do standard poodle cuts on their dogs at home, remember back brushing is key. Always remember to back brush. The second cut is always the quickest, but always remember to back brush because that will justify about how long you take on the actual haircut. Back brushing always makes the haircut look cleaner and makes your work easier afterwards. Now I'm going to go through with my comb and comb out the fur just to kind of catch all the sticky outies and then all the loose fur from the clipping so I can know what to start scissoring when I pull out my shears. I'm a nerd but I thought that looked so cool with, <laughs> with the table going up. It just looks like everything was going in reverse. Sorry, had to add that in. Right now I'm going through and I'm cleaning up everything from the prep work so I'm neatening up the sanitary and then I'm cleaning out the underarms and what y'all will notice is that I clean the table often and that is because I do not like hair on the table because it just sticks to the dog's feet but right now I'm cleaning up the paw pads because I did see extra long hair and that is my biggest pet peeve when doing clean feet is the long hair on the nails and in between the toes and on the webbing of the feet. I can't stand it. Also, if y'all ever catch me looking at the camera just randomly, it's because I'm trying to check how long I've been grooming because this is also how I time myself with time management. I check the camera to see, okay, I, all right, I've been doing this dog for about 20 minutes. I should allow myself X amount of time left to finish his grooming. And the only reason why I noticed it is because my girlfriend actually pointed it out to me. She was like, why are you always looking at the camera? I was like, uh, 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 that's how I check my stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
when you are doing scissor work and you're scissoring the legs, I always teach every new groomer, I teach new bathers when they wanna learn, you always scissor to the shape of the leg. You don't wanna scissor it in, you don't wanna leave a big curve where it looks uneven, but you always scissor to the shape of the leg and that's how you get the straight cut and the straight lines that you're looking for for the grooming. Now when you're scissoring and you are scissoring around that clean foot edge, so at the bottom of the leg, right where the fur meets the clean foot, I was watching this video, ironically on YouTube, and this woman was grooming a poodle and she taught me a trick. She essentially just took her hand around the dog's leg and ran it down the leg and scissored all of the hair that was sticking out and was uneven and it made the prettiest cut on the dog's foot everything looks so even i don't think i did it on this dog and the only reason why i didn't do it on this dog is because the owners were already scissoring and cutting at his feet at home so his back feet were all choppy they were if you can see his back feet are kind of choppy looking and like all kind of like blunt cuts in there and that's because the pet parents were cutting him at home and while i'm on that can y'all please stop doing that at home because it makes our job so much more difficult y'all cut up at the dog's face feet around his legs the tail and y'all say can y'all fix this no no we cannot fix that do you know what that looks like you just put harsh lines in the dog we cannot fix that now we got to shave past that and y'all don't want the dog shaved short but we got to shave past that to make it look like an even cut don't cut your dogs at home don't don't do that just 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 stop put the kitchen scissors down and walk away back away slowly and let the professionals do it and please don't come in the comments talk about some i'm a hairstylist i know what i'm doing no you don't For me, I'm a really precise picky groomer and I nitpick all the time. So when I say I take pride in my grooming, I take pride in my grooming. So I pay very close attention to detail of what the foot looks like, the leg looks like, the face, the ears, everything. Because I, at the end of the day, want the pet parent to be satisfied with their groom and be pleased with the fact that they drop their dog off there, as well as wanting to return. I want to touch on real quick about just taking pride in your grooming. When you take pride in your work, that means you do the best that you can. And where it pays off in grooming is if you're taking pride in your grooming, you don't have to beg for clients or have to tell people, hey, come back to me. They will see what you did and realize they haven't gotten a good quality haircut like that anywhere else and they will automatically come back to you. So for groomers, new groomers, bathers who want to become groomers, even pet parents at home that want to groom their own dog, take pride in your work and I promise you will see your skill level flourish. Your skill will always speak for itself. If you take pride in your work, your skill will always speak for itself. I can guarantee that. Right here, I'm setting the palm tail. Now, one of my old coworkers is probably gonna get mad at me for saying this. I don't know how far down you're supposed to go on the tail when you're shaving it. I think it's like one third or one fourth of the base of the tail you're supposed to shave. I think, don't quote me on that, you might have to Google it. But I do just enough where I think, okay, this looks fine, this looks good. Now, when we're setting a palm tail on a dog who has a tail like that, 
it's a little bit harder because his tail is almost like straight out it doesn't like poof out like a palm tail so you kind of have to make or create a palm tail which was not too hard for him because he kind of had a poodle coat but between his tail and his top knot it was just a little difficult the key to a palm tail is it basically being round now his tail looks like a little bush like a tree bush but i'm trying to make it as round as i can uh i'm holding it by like literally a strand of hair trying to make it as round as i can but i think i did okay the mom was like really pleased and satisfied also when you are setting a palm tail and you have to shave it you want to go back through and scissor that hair that was on the body so it kind of looks like it fades into the shave part of the tail you don't want to just leave that blunt cut you want to kind of thin that in and set it when you're doing clean face on a poodle the part of the neck that is shaved is supposed to come down into a v on their chest and that's what I was trying to accomplish there. Now I'm going to be starting his top knot. And as you can see, I left a lot of hair on the back of his neck down to his shoulder blades. So poodles get what is called a crest, kind of like Bichons do if you know what Bichons get. But they get a crest. So essentially what that is, it's just the top knot blended into the back of their neck blended into their body and their haircut now i pinned his ears down in front of him so the ears wouldn't get in the way because sometimes when you're scissoring around the ears it tickles to the dogs and they'll jerk their ear and then you can cut some of the ear hair you can cut the ears so what i do is i take him into a little ponytail and i put it right under his chin and that way i can scissor around his face but it looks like i took it off for some reason or another When you see me jiggle his ears back and forth, that is so I can get the loose hairs off. I actually learned that from one of my old coworkers and I thought that was kind of interesting because instead of blowing the hair off with like wind or whatever, or like wiping it off with your hand, you jiggle their ears so that makes the loose hair fall off as opposed to wiping it and messing up the top knot with your hand or some air. You can't see it because it's on the other side, but when you're cutting the side of the top knot that's directly on top of the ear, you want to cut that top knot straight across because they're supposed to have a defined line right on the top of their ear. If you're paying attention to his top knot, you can see that it's it's more on the flatter side. It doesn't really stick up like most top knots. So trying to scissor his top knot was a little bit more difficult because top knots are supposed to be round where his is more square because of the shape of his head as well as his hair. I remember when I first came back from Academy and one of the girls at the salon who used to be the manager asked me because she watched me do a poodle cut and she asked me who taught you how to do a poodle cut and I said you know the just the trainer so and so and she was like but that's not how she teaches poodle cuts and how to do the top knot so the way you're supposed to do the top knot you're supposed to comb all the hair to one side of the face 
scissor wood sticks out, comb it back to the other side, scissor wood sticks out, and boom, you got your top knot, and you just have to round it off after that. I don't really do that. I kind of just hack at the top knot and then round it until it looks good, and it always comes out great, and she said the same thing. She says, your top knots always come out good, but that's definitely not how you're supposed to do them. <laughs> Right now I'm just trying to get that round curve to the top of his head, which is a little bit harder because again, he has a flat top knot. So I'm just trying to blend in the crest, get the roundness to the top of his head as well as the front of his head. But for a top knot, you're essentially supposed to leave a lot of the stuff up at the top, like where it is now. I do believe I went back and I scissored some of it because it did look a little crazy up at the top, but essentially you're supposed to leave that and round it just a bit. going through and I'm cleaning up his ears and for him for most boy dogs I try and give just a basic blunt cut across the ears because they look more like boy ears than curved round ears and I do believe that kind of just polished off the rest of his haircut and made him look so cute and then after this I'm going to shave his goatee even though he looks really cute with a beard. Just like that, the goatee is gone. It's like the last samurai, it's just gone. Look at him looking so cute and sophisticated in his poodle cut. He looks like a little prestigious young man. Right now I'm combing him, getting him ready for pictures as I do all things, but just look at him. He just looks so handsome with his little cut. He looks so cute and little, oh, he's so cute. I just loved him. Like I said, he was the best dog ever, I swear. But make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and share this if you like the video.